Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSB lecture series on transformational chemistry. This lecture is 30th in the series. In my previous lecture, I started discussion on ligands having carbon as donor atoms. Let me continue from where I had stopped. So, I showed you about uh, the difference between Fischer carbene and Schrock carbene uh, and we have one more carbene called N heterocyclic carbene and if you just look into N heterocyclic carbene, this is how a typical N heterocyclic carbene looks like and this carbon has a lone pair very similar to carbon monoxide and that can be given to metal through sigma bond and then it has pi star to pi star it can take electron density from metal through back bonding. So, it is also comes under non classical ligands along with carbon monoxide, phosphines and other olefins. I have also shown how the sigma bonding happens here, sigma bond you can see here and then the back bonding again pi star is there and if you can see when we have this pi star on carbon there is a competition for electron donation from both metal as well as nitrogen which has a lone pair. As a result what happens it is always very easy it to take electron density within the molecule rather than you know taking from metal. As a result what happens it has less inclination to take electrons from metal through back bonding. As a result what happens it is a good sigma donor but relatively weak pi acceptor compared to carbon monoxide or tertiary phosphines. For the same reason it has of course this kind of lone pair of nitrogen coming to carbon pi star is also called negative hyperconjugation and that is more pronounced in case of uh, phosphorus nitrogen bonds and also one way the back bonding from metal to phosphorus sigma star orbitals is also called as negative hyperconjugation. That means this n heterocyclic carbenes as carbon donors can mimic similar type of chemistry we come across with carbon monoxide and uh, olefin chemistry and also phosphines and also uh, they, they are as good as phosphines in some organic transformations as catalysts. And then of course in, in metal alkoxy carbon interaction very similar this carbon lone pair goes to the metal through sigma bonding and once again here also metal gives electrons to pi star of uh, uh, carbon uh, through back donation and once again here oxygen lone pair also competes for this one. As a result, these alkoxy carbenes and N heterocyclic carbenes are relatively poor pi acceptors compared to carbon monoxide and phosphines. I hope it is clear now through orbitals also I have shown how they interact while doing back bonding or in sigma bonding. So, this is called fullerene and fullerene if you consider one side or one single double bond, one, one isolated, it, this, this double bonds can you know behave as isolated uh, double bonds we come across in olefin. That means whatever the reactions we perform on olefin such as ethylene similar reactions can be performed here. Let me show a couple of uh, reactions here. So, let us consider when isolated double bond something like this and this whole moiety I should call it as C60. So, if I am considering one of these double bond, there is no harm in writing something like this in this way you can represent. And then let me treat this one with lithiated uh, alkyne such as uh, Me3 Si. And then followed by adding acid. So, it can one can make compound like this. In a similar way in another reaction if I take lithium in liquid ammonia using and later add tertiary butanol it can form NH2. So, amination reaction can also be performed. So, that means fullerene can also be considered as a simple organic molecule and one can perform reactions I have shown here or several other similar reactions. Another reaction I have shown here you take this fullerene C60 
and treat with Grignard reagents such as uh, phenyl magnesium bromide in presence of this uh, cuprous bromide complex having dimethyl sulphide and you take this one in toluene and um, THF mixture at minus 78 degree centigrade and once the addition is addition has to be done at minus 78 and then it should be warmed to room temperature and then excess of this one can be quenched using ammonium chloride aqueous ammonium chloride that leads to the formation of uh, something like this you can you can recall now it resembles C5H6 cyclopentadiene and when you add metal alkoxide to it I have given metal alkoxides of one of these things here in THF and you can make it eta 5 and you can see a half sandwich compounds coming something like this. So that means uh, one of the uh, 5 membered ring can also be utilized as a eta 5 uh, ligand from C60. This was reported in 1996. If you want more information you can refer to this journal here. So now look into another important uh, ligand among carbon donor ligands that is cyanide ion can form complexes with uh, tungsten metal ions in aqueous medium and also with group 12 ions. So group 12 ions means zinc, cadmium and mercury they have completely filled electronic configuration that means ND10, N plus 1, S2. Uh, nevertheless, it can also form complexes with uh, these metal ions also. Uh, due to negative charge, cyanide ion is a poor pi acceptor. That means due to the negative charge cyanide ion is a poor pi acceptor but forms complexes with metals in both low and high oxy states. Due to large nephrolaxitic effect it occupies higher position in spectrochemical series. So otherwise it should have been uh, much lower we come across something called as nephrolaxitic effect because of this one it occupies higher position in spectrochemical series. I have given two very very important uh, complexes here you can see uh, here nickel is in zero valent state tetracyno nickelate and counter uh, cations I have shown as potassium. This is one example of uh, cyanates stabilizing metal in low valent state and of course we have another one here stabilizing iron in plus 3 state hexacyanoferrate. I shall elaborate more about nephrolaxitic effect and also how this is related to Rakha parameters when I talk about electronic spectroscopy. Nevertheless, I should tell you a little bit about uh, nephrolaxitic effect before I proceed. So when an atom has more than one electron, there will be some electrostatic repulsion between those electrons. You should remember that the amount of repulsion varies from atom to atom depending upon the number and spin of the electrons and the orbitals they occupy. So Raka parameters were generated as a means to describe the effect of electron-electron repulsion within the metal complexes arising due to the formation of metal to ligand bond. The Raka parameters are A, B and C. In the case of Tanube sugono diagrams each electron configuration split has an energy that can be related by the B value and also one can also use Orgel diagram to predict and calculate uh, Raka parameters for various electronic configurations. The decrease in the Raka parameter B as I mentioned A, B, C are there and the decrease in the Raka parameter B indicates that in a complex there is less repulsion between the two electrons in a given doubly occupied metal d orbital that means in E g then there is in the respective m n plus gaseous metal ion before it enters into ligand field. So which in turn implies that the size of the orbital is larger in the complex. So this electron cloud expansion effect may occur for one or both of two reasons that means this expansion of electron count can be attributed to two important reasons. One of the two reasons is that the effective positive charge on the metal has decreased because more and more electron density is coming from ligands through sigma donation. Since the positive charge of the metal is reduced by any negative charge on the ligand, the d orbital can expand slightly. You should remember I tell you again, since the positive charge of the metal is reduced by any negative charge on the ligand especially anionic ligands are approaching the metal the orbitals can expand slightly. So the overlapping with ligand orbitals 
and forming covalent bonds increases orbital size because the resulting molecular orbital is formed from two atomic orbitals. So, the reduction of B from its free ion value is normally reported in terms of nephilaxitic parameter that we see in case of cyanide ligands that is the parameter beta is nothing but the ratio of the B value of complex to the B value of free ion. Experimentally it is observed that the size of the nephilaxitic parameter always follows a certain trend with respect to the nature of the ligand present. So, I think uh, you should remember to this extent about nephilaxitic effect and how Raka parameters are related to this one. When I discuss about electronic spectroscopy, I shall show you how to calculate by taking one or two examples. So, this one is uh, Prussian blue actually uh, when you see uh, textbook they show simple K4 Fe Cn6 or something like that actually uh, this has 3 Fe2 ions and 4 Fe3 ions and Fe2 ions are surrounded by 6 cyanides in this fashion and then these are surrounded by N binding in this fashion. So, this, this has a complex structure if you are curious this is how the structure looks like you can see here iron the middle iron in plus 3 state are coordinated from 6 directions uh, having octahedral geometry in this fashion and this continues in 3 dimensional form. So, this is how it looks like uh, for clarity you can see uh, the labeled carb, uh, you know atoms with the different color that should tell you how the arrangement is made for this uh, Fe 3 plus and Fe 2 plus in the lattice. So, cyanide is one of the very very important ligand in coordination chemistry. Let us look into the coordination coordinating modes of cyanide ion. The simplest one is a terminal in this fashion and you should remember we have a lone pair on nitrogen. So, it can also form bridging or dimetallic complexes through both carbon and nitrogen bond something like this and also this triple bond can also coordinate to metal in this fashion or uh, this the carbon itself can bind to two metal centers very similar to carbon monoxide ok bridging can be this type and you should remember that still we are left with a pair of electrons here. So, third metal can come and coordinate to n in this fashion or if it is bond is reduced it can have a bent structure something like this where both carbon and nitrogen are making bond with the uh, two same or different metals. It can be homo or hetero bimetallic complex. So, these are some of the important coordinating modes uh, of cyanide ion. Then how to characterize cyano complexes uh, to confirm that we have cyanide and it has a particular type of uh, coordination mode that comes from analytical and spectroscopic data. The important one is IR. So, IR shows a sharp intense band between 2000 to 2200 centimeter minus due to nitrogen lone pair it can act as a bridging ligand with uh, MCN links that is what I mentioned. So, such complexes are polymeric in nature with chain structures one such example I showed you that one is Persian blue and gold cyanide, zinc cyanide and cadmium cyanide all show chain structures. One such silver complex was also prepared in my group and that I showed you I will that I will show you in next slide. And for example, here you can see when uh, zirconosine diiodide, this is called zirconosine diiodide, zirconosine diiodide, uh, it is treated with uh, hexacyanoplatinate forms a heterodimetallic complex of this type, it has a polymeric structure. You can see here this is called cyclodiphosphazine, it is a, a inorganic heterocyclic ring having alternate phosphorus and nitrogen. Uh, having 4 membered and it is planar and phosphorus has a pair of electrons. It, now, this one has a cis conformation and this acts as a wonderful ligand system and we have explored uh, its rich coordination chemistry and organometallic chemistry and also its utility in various applications. So, one such ligand I have shown here. So, when this ligand a bridging bidentate ligand is treated with silver cyanide in astronitrile it forms one dimensional chain of this fashion. You can see here uh, silver is uh, tetra coordinated having a tetrahedral geometry and two phosphorus from two different N2P2 rings are binding here and one nitrogen of uh, 
cyanide is binding here and this one is cationic and this fragment is anionic because two cyanides are there. So, that means it is a charge balance is there this is anion this is a cation and here one is 4 coordinated one is 2 coordinated and it grows to have something like this zigzag uh, one di dimensional polymeric structure it has. So, this is how the X-ray structure depicts for this molecule. Another interesting compound is there you can see here where cyanide acting as terminal as well as a bridging ligand. For example, you see here KFE CrCN6 the green isomer that means it exists in two isomeric forms. Green isomer has iron 2 and cyanide through and chromium 3 binding to N uh, whereas in case of red isomer opposite is true chromium 2 binds to carbon and then iron 3 binds to nitrogen linkages. One such isomer I have shown here of course you should be able to tell which isomer it is whether it is green isomer or red isomer from this data from this information you should be able to tell. And here M can be a main group element as well for example, silicon, germanium or tin can also be used here and other metals such as chromium 3, manganese 2 or iron 2. So, all this that means you can make a series of complexes of this type here. And if you again want more information very useful information is there if you read advanced engineering chemistry 6th edition and this information is there around this page. So, now let us look into other carbon donor ligands uh, the important ones are carbon dioxide from the point of uh, uh, reduction of carbon dioxide lot of groups show enormous interest and make lot of complexes eventually to reduce carbon dioxide is not very easy nevertheless people have succeeded partially in converting that into useful organic molecules. And then let us also look into carbon disulfide and also carbon oxysulfide as ligands. So, these three are you know belongs to cumulins category and these three cumulins react in a similar fashion with appropriate metal reagents to form complexes that is the reason I have put all these three together. And more emphasis is given to the chemistry of carbon dioxide with an aim to use it in organic synthesis to convert into useful organic chemicals. Now, let us look into all possible coordination modes of CO2 and this is very very important you should remember. So, when you want to activate carbon dioxide or when you want to reduce carbon dioxide and when it approaches a metal and uh, how it interacts you know one can see here and it can also bind in eta 1 fashion simply in this way or it can also bind in eta 2 fashion. Initially breakage of one of the double bonds is very essential and it has to be bond has to be polarized and then it can be added in a concerted fashion like this or it can also bridge two metal centers in eta 2 fashion in this way after breaking one of the C double one of the CO bond or it can also be eta 2 mu 2 and eta 3 because this one is uh, eta 3 because the hapticity is 3 here, but here it is bridging as well as chelating. One can also see class 2 type where oxygen lone pair is coming in this fashion and also one can also see another type of mu 3 eta 3, but all going to different metals or one can also have mu 3 eta 4 or one can have mu eta mu 4 eta 4 that means bridging 4 metal ions mu 4 mu 3 means bridging 3 metal ions mu 2 is bridging 2 metal ions and here also it is it is bridging or linking 4 metal ions here but it shows eta 5 coordination because here eta 2 eta 1 eta 1 eta 1 so eta 5. Interestingly examples are there for each case we may have plenty of examples in some cases but we have few examples in some other cases. Let me show a couple of examples here how one can uh, initiate the binding of carbon monoxide to appropriate metal complexes. Here this is a rhodium diarsine chloro complex rhodium 1 complex and again this arsine diarsine is a, a neutral ligand very similar to diphosphorus and for simplicity I have omitted A substituents they should be PPH2 they should be PH2 here. Initially it has something like this kind of structure here square pyramidal structure and then CO2 comes on the 6th position and then it forms a complex like this. And also you can see here 
how concentrated addition happens when you take this carbon monoxide and add oxygen it appears like insertion of oxygen takes place here and it appears as if we have inserted carbon monoxide in, in, in a oxidative addition fashion. So, this is uh, some sort of generating CO2 uh, through by some other means not directly taking carbon dioxide, but taking CO is there and we have taken this one and it forms a complex. Okay. Uh, other examples are there you can see here uh, this one has a a carbon dioxide bound complex. For example, you take this one and treat with Wittig reagent and that means whatever the Wittig reagent does for a ketone uh, same thing can also be done onto a, a carbon monoxide a CO double bond on a metal center. So, that means you can you can see something like this happening of course, once this goes off uh, this oxygen is abstracted to come here as trimethyl phosphine oxide. And one can also generate a CO2 using two appropriately uh, substituted uh, metal reagents. For example, here one have a hydroxyl group we have in another one we have carboxylic group here. So, if you take uh, these two elimination of water takes place. So, here elimination of water condensation takes place to have a bridging CO2 that means we, we came across few examples of coordination modes I showed you here. And you can get an example for all type of coordination modes if you look into textbooks especially 6th edition of uh, advanced engineering chemistry by Cotton and others. You take uh, this anionic uh, homolyptic tetracarbonyl ruthenium complex and treat with carbon dioxide you can you can generate something like this and then CO and CO3 2 minus comes out that means here it acts as a source of carbon monoxide here few examples I have shown here very similar to what I showed in case of MH, but it is slightly different to what are the different bonds CO2 can be added. I have shown here for example, you take MH bond and you, you can add CO2 or you, you can insert CO2 either in this fashion or in this fashion. So, that means I am giving you more avenues to use CO2 or activate CO2 molecule in your own metal complexes. Yeah, so, for example, if you have MH bond still that can be used for reducing carbon dioxide and if you have MOH bond still you can use it. Of course, you have to choose the right kind of ligands here uh, for performing this reaction with better yield and better conversions. And then you can also insert carbon dioxide between metal to carbon bond in this fashion or it can also form something like this or if you take a metal to amide bond you can insert this one in this fashion or if you take simply a oxo bridge a metal complex you can insert CO2 in this fashion. So, these are all wide variety of reactions uh, that means there is plenty of scope to activate CO2 depending upon what kind of uh, other ligands we have on metal and what is its oxygen state and how this can facilitate the activation of CO2 one should look into it thoroughly then performing some reactions would be very easy. Let me stop uh, here and continue discussing more about uh, carbon donor ligands in my next lecture until then try to look into more details about carbon dioxide and its complexes in standard textbooks.